I just completed this batch of coffee soap. And you may remember last year in April or maybe May, I made soul soothing soaps. That's kind of a mouthful, soul soothing soaps. And one was a coffee and I loved how it turned out. So I decided to try it again in a bigger batch to share with all of you. So I do a little bit more in this video, show you making the coffee lye solution, etc. So I hope you'll like the closer look at my process for making soap. The first thing to do is to make the coffee lye solution. I need quite a bit of water here. This is not going to be a recipe, so I'm not going to take the time to share all the amounts. Just showing my process of what I'm gonna do to make this whole batch. Okay, so I have my water and I'm going to add in my sodium hydroxide. And I'm not gonna talk because I don't want to breathe this in. So I've allowed this to cool just a bit so it does not scorch the coffee and now I'm going to add in some ground espresso. And the heat from the lye solution is essentially just going to brew the coffee which is perfect. So I have my cocoa butter in and I love to use the little wafers and I'm going to measure out my coconut oil. <laughs> it's going to take me a while because it's chilly up here today and coconut oil is a 76 degree melt point and it's 59 so I'm going to have to use some elbow grease. I have my bucket here, I don't know if you can really see, my bucket here is on top of another bucket and that just helps bring it up a little for me. I just have a chisel here that I use, and I'm just gonna be chipping away at it for a little bit. So I'm gonna put this on like a hot plate dealio and let it melt down, and then I will add in the liquid oils. I don't know that I'm gonna show that part just because they're in buckets and I really kind of struggle a bit, and it really wouldn't be in camera very well. So while my hard oils melt and my lye solution cools, I'm gonna work on lining my mold. So I have some brown freezer paper on a roll here. And I'm going to get my quilter's ruler right here first. I usually have seven inches for an overhang. So this mold then is uh, 14 inches long. So I'm gonna mark it at 14, and then we're going to do another seven. So I just have a way of doing that. <laughs> Doesn't necessarily make sense, but it does to me. Okay, so I'm gonna rip this off. So I want to go ahead and make the lines. Let's scoot down just a little bit here. So we know where to fold it. Not used to having the tripod there, so I keep whacking my ruler against it. Okay, and then let me think. I need I've started doing it a little different again because I was having too much leakage out of this particular freezer paper. So it's, let's see, it's 12 and a half. So 
I go to 275, 2.75 on my paper here. Make a line like so. And I'm sure there's all sorts of different ways that people can do this. After all the years, this is how I like to do it. Definitely seems more coherent when I'm trying, when I'm not trying to explain it. I just do it. All right, so then I cut these parts like so. I don't go all the way down, just a little bit on the ends. And I go ahead and fold them. Sometimes I can't see my lines because I use a very similar colored. You can see what color that's supposed to be if it focuses right there. So <laughs> sometimes I can't see it very well. But that's, you know, it's just one of those things. It's the pen that I have in that drawer and it's just the one I use. I could go get a different pen with a brighter color, but. I just don't do it. So I just worry it out. And I go ahead and fold these ones in. I always end up adjusting them just a little bit. put this piece in the mold. Now the wood molds, they don't always look the prettiest. Um, this brown paper, brown freezer paper especially allows just a little bit of oil seepage. So it's gotten into there. We always get a little leaks on the corners every now and again. Just clean those up the best I can. It gets discolored from colorants and all the things. So I try to push this down in and then fold over. I just have some masking tape here. Painter's tape works the same. Looks like I did that really well. Sometimes I have a little too much extra and I have to refold. Might do that just a, a hit. I have to make sure this is pushed down over there. It's amazing how much this doesn't push down into the edge like you think it would. All right, so now another slice. And I've done it all different ways, but I've been having a lot of leakage, so this is just the best right now. This is a little bit extra paper, but I find it helps to have an extra layer on the bottom anyway. So the white freezer paper, I don't have the same issues. So it's just one of those things. So again, I'm doing seven, so now I need 12 and a half, so I'm gonna to go to 19 and a half, move my ruler to the 17, because I know that's seven. Go ahead and rip this off. I need to make my line so I know where to fold. And I usually do several at a time. And I just stand here for an hour and make just a whole bunch of them. And it's actually not that big of a deal. But we're just doing the one for today. So I only need it to be 14 this away. So I'm knowing that it's 18, I'm gonna take four inches off. And then what I'll do is I just save this for resting like spoons 
fun when I'm making wax melts, etc. It always comes in handy at some point. Get my fold lines done again. Looks like I went a little over, but that should be fine because I seem to always make these just a hint wider. I think my mold isn't exactly. So now I have all these flaps, but I want those there. That gives extra protection from my mold. And then I just push, 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 push. It really does need to be down in there well to make some crisp edges. And that seems pretty much perfect. So push it down in again. These edges aren't always the best. They pull up just a little bit until it gets the weight of the soap in there. All right, so now my mold is lined. So basically it's about, what time? It's about 11 o'clock in the morning. So I probably won't actually work on making the soap until three or four. So at that point, my oils have cooled to room temperature. My lye solution is cooled to room temperature. And in the meantime, I work on other stuff like packing orders or packaging bath bombs, etc. Okay, so it's time to get started making the soap. And my oils have cooled down quite a bit. They've gotten just a little bit cloudy, but I'm going to put in some honey and water that I've heated up. So it's pretty hot. And I did that on purpose so that it would maybe melt that down just a little bit. Kind of bring the temperature up. I've just mixed one ounce of honey in about an ounce and a half of water. I find that getting it kind of pre-blended really does help. Now we still need to add in the coffee seed oil. So we're going to weigh it. Oh, it's being stubborn. All right, I can go up just a little bit more before it, it is worn out. So I just have some super dark and beautiful coffee seed oil from Brambleberry. Oh, it's beautiful. Now it is a little bit expensive, but I found that it did just really well in soap. So yes, it did not quite have as much. So I'm going, well, actually, here we go. Yes, I'm getting right as I need, actually. It's a little thick down in there. And one more thing that I want to put in is some heavy cream powder. Now, I don't have any just like really fresh milks that I'm wanting to put in this today. And the cream I actually have down in my house at the moment has a lot of extra ingredients. So I thought I would use the heavy cream powder. We'll just get that all blended in. Well, that's cool. <laughs> I love that. All right, so I'm gonna blend for just a little while. Now it's time for the lye solution. And 
it is very dark. I love it. It's at room temperature, which I'm up at 63. It had cooled down a bit, so I had to turn my heater on for a while. So I am going to strain this out. Now I'm okay with the grounds going into this because they're very fine. They're an espresso ground and they're just so fine. And I absolutely loved it in the soap that I had made. Let's see. Yes, it is definitely catching some of the grounds. I said grounds, but I think it came sounded a little different how it came out. This might take me a little bit. Most of the grounds had come out with that first bit, so that's it's a little bit better now. Whoa, didn't mean to do that. <laughs> Oops, face. This is a little bit messy. I will admit to that. All right, so now I am going to stick blend this to, well, I'd like it to be at a light to medium trace, but we still have the fragrance to put in. So I've mixed a couple of vanillas together. It just smells so good, oh my goodness. And I am using it at a very low usage rate. Let me think about what it actually, what I decided on. It's about 3%. So I'm wanting just a nice vanilla, but nothing super strong that's gonna overwhelm the coffee. I feel like just the combo of the coffee seed oil, the brewed coffee, and just a, the light fragrance makes just an amazing coffee soap. All right, so here we go. It smells amazing. Now this is going to discolor it because there's vanillin in the fragrance. I personally look for vanillas that aren't really overly buttery. I don't I don't typically care for those type of vanillas myself. I like the smell of vanilla extract. It's very thin because let's face it, it's really cold up here today. It's not cold, but it's cool. So let's see, yeah, see we don't even have a trace yet. All right, I'm gonna give my stick blender a break. It's doing quite a bit of work here. And I'm going to just let this thicken up naturally. Okay, so it's at a nice thickness, so I'm gonna go ahead and pour and it is just a beautiful batch of soap. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Smacking it down helps to pop the air bubbles that might be trapped. When you have lots of air bubbles, when you cut the soap, especially with a wire cutter, 
it exaggerates all of those bubbles. So we definitely try to get them out. And if the batter is thicker, then it can create air pockets if you don't smack it down. And those are just bigger air bubbles, really. Just spots that aren't inhabited by soap. Love this. So I have been using mine at the kitchen sink and it has been spectacular in the kitchen. It's a little bit exfoliating from the coffee in it, but it's not overly so. Sometimes using regular coffee can be scratchy. I don't find it to be scratchy. One thing we'll have to consider with this though is I do think a little bit more went into the the batter here than my last batch. All right, let's smack this down again. But really, how beautiful is this? I love coffee. Fun fact, my husband got us a, I think it's a Breville, like an espresso maker for Christmas. I got all the box. I have not yet attempted it. I think I'm a little nervous that I'm not going to make good coffee and then I'll be upset. So I have just dilly daddled and dilly daddled. We have got to start making ourselves some espresso. Yum. All right, well, I think that's gonna be good enough for the texture on this soap. I like it. It's a little, well, let me get over here. Looks like I haven't, I don't know if I touched over there or not. I was thinking it's thickening up nicely. The honey is going to kind of cause it to heat up a little bit. I tend to have coffee soaps that uh, overheat and crack. So we'll see how it goes, but it's pretty cool up here. So I think it'll be fine. So all I'm going to do is, I'll probably clean off these edges. I am going to spritz this with a high percentage alcohol, and then I'm going to cover it with a piece of cardboard. And I don't expect to really mess with this for a couple of days. I like mine to sit in the mold for two days before I unmold and split it up into the loaf. So I'll see you then. Alrighty then, it's been almost 48 hours since I made this. And I know I have some shadows here. I hope you can see past those. But I see I have some discoloration. It's a little darker in the center. So I might have gotten a partial gel, but I have seen that before on my batches, but did not have a partial gel. So we won't know until we get into it. So we shall just see when we slice up the bars, or the loaves I should say, and then the bars. Sometimes <laughs> these, these little tape pieces don't usually stick until I'm doing a video and then they stick really well. Alright, that one was already hot. So go. It doesn't really look like I had much leaking this time. Maybe just a very hint down in the corner. And I thought we'd weigh this, weigh this uh, slab. It's not something I tend to do. Where's the hold button right there? Okay. So let's see if it can. Oh, it's mad. <laughs> it's mad. All right. So I brought in the big scale. Let's see what it says. see mode it is 21 pounds and 12.2 ounces so that's what that slab size comes out to so we'll peel these back I think 
my coffee grounds were just a little bit thicker with this coffee that I used this time. I think the grounds are perfect, especially in a kitchen soap, because you have, you know, butter, oil, meat, fat, etc. on your hands at times. Alright, so this piece comes off. And that does help make a barrier here. I don't know if you can see it. Can you see how all that kind of the uh, oil has seeped into the liner a little bit? All right, so if we have a partial gel, this is going to be the really telltale sign on the bottom. And it looks okay. Yeah, that looks all right. I think... I think it's okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go get my loaf splitter and then we'll split this up. Alright, so this splitter here is from Smith Creek Studio and I don't know whether they're still making them or not. I've been onto their website on occasion to check when I would do a video showing my, my splitter, but I haven't been seeing it. I really do love how this one works. Now on this slab size, I don't cut anything off of the edge. I do take a, a thin slice off of my really, really big loaf molds, slabs. <laughs> having a hard time getting that out today. So I cut at two and a half, and I have a little measurement here on this side, and then I have a little piece of masking tape on this side to help guide me. My husband prefers that I don't do this, but I have been doing it lately. I'm a quite a precise person, but he's more precise. So there we have the first loaf. That looks good. Because there's vanillin in this fragrance, it is going to discolor, and it starts at the edges and works in as it's exposed to the oxygen. So well, that was a good cut. And then I just slide it back down. Sometimes it likes to slide, sometimes it does not. All right. That's looking good again. And we just slide it on through. Now, I really prefer the single on this one just because um, I can just choose whatever size I want. If I had a multi loaf cutter that had just determined sizes, that would kind of be a pain because I do use it for different projects, but definitely would be nice to have where I could just cut the whole thing at once, take a little bit more power behind it, but could be done. So this is this is a section that we'd start seeing if there was a partial gel, and it does not appear to be partially gelled at all. It smells really good. I am just loving that subtle vanilla. Love it. Every time I use this soap, the previously made version, at my kitchen sink, which I've been using for quite some time. I just, I love this soap. So good. Just that light bulb moment was like, you don't have to scent a coffee soap with a coffee fragrance. And I was like, oh, mm-hmm. That makes sense, lady. I like it. So let's look and see how close I was here. So I'll put it the two and the half. And it looks like it's pretty much right on. Maybe a hint, a hint sliverously, slivery, what word would I use? By a sliver, just a hint too wide. All right, so now I have to go get my cutter. I have my multi-bar cutter here and it's from Bud's Wood Shop. I really love it, it works great. Right, this is an end 
side side I guess so I'm gonna turn it around and cut it for sample sizes as well and this end is always a little bit weird so I don't use it as the beginning of a bar So you can see how it had started discoloring here on the side because this was a edge loaf. Looks good. It smells really good too. Oh, I love this. Love it. So we just have a bunch of nice bars here. I don't think I'm going to stack them too perfectly just because I need to line them back up on another tray so that's that's getting to be a lot of a lot of lining things up so we'll go easy on this one and I do need to cut this piece but I think I'll wait this is a very just simple bar but it turned out so great Looks like it started to overheat just a tiny bit. The coffee and the honey and the cream, it just likes to overheat. That's just all there is to it. So it'll be interesting to see what the final color will be. I suspect it's gonna get darker than that. Now I used just a little bit more vanilla in this batch than I did that previous one from last year. So it may go just a little bit darker. I don't like a super brown soap. It's okay if it happens, but I don't know. The brown lather is a little unappealing if you ask me, but some people don't mind. So I get asked this a lot. We're two and a half inches this way. We're approximately 3.25 to 3.5 inches this way and 1.25 inches this way. Now these are going to cure down quite a bit, so they'll obviously be a little bit smaller than that in the end. They typically weigh, typically it's 5.3, 5.4 is the average in the long run. Some bars, depending on how I, my process that time, sometimes they'll be six, nearly six ounces. But for the most part, they hang out around that 5.5 five range. And those fit in the soap boxes really well that I get from Wholesale Supplies Plus. Now, my goodness gracious, have those things gone up. I used to spend well under $100 for a bulk order of those, which is about 1,100 boxes, I think. I think they're at 160 now. I will double check those numbers when I, if I can. I'm going to clean up this area and then I will get the tray to line these up on. So these are just gonna head on over to the curing rack. I'm basically just gonna forget about them for, for many weeks. Okay, so the soap has been curing now just over a month and the color is quite uniformly brown and it looks really nice. It's a little bit rough, just even, you know, little smear marks during the cutting portion it ends up hardening up and I don't know, it creates a rough texture. So we do go ahead and plane and bevel pretty much all of our soap bars. And this is just a wood planer that my husband built. And we've been using the same one since, <laughs> since we started this process. So it's been around for a long time. So let's see, this one is the top. So I pull it towards me 
and it just oh it just already just smoothed that up so nicely it's just you know an aesthetic for me I prefer a beveled bar but really it doesn't matter that much within the first you know use it's just if they're not beveled or planed I should say then they just end up being nice and smooth anyway so it's not really a big deal but we like to do it so we do it's just part of our thing that we have been doing for a very long time so we are just going to continue our process here so this soap has been curing just over a month I can't remember if I said that already and ideally we'd get to this just a little bit sooner but I tend to be a procrastinator so I don't tend to organize the work <laughs> for that usually I've been filming so much and everything that I don't always want my people up here and by people I mean my son or husband but it's mostly just been my son this year helping me so this is the point that I turn it over to him I don't tend to do this portion unless I just you know I'm, I'm sitting around I don't have anything to do because I'm waiting on something what have you then I will tackle it but otherwise my son does all of this so it doesn't take very long really we just put on something good to watch and or some good music and we just power through it sometimes it does jump a little bit so we just run it over but all right so I'll do one more of the planing and I think we're okay here as far as the screen goes Ah, so smooth. I love it. The coffee did end up being just a little bit of a, a little bit of a thicker than that test batch that I did just for us, but it's still really nice. You can see how shiny and smooth it is. I love that. Okay, so we do end up with a little bit of the excess. Sometimes there's some. Um, ash on it and everything and so it just works out just to take those off but these can either be rebatched or they could be put in just if they don't have a lot of ash on them or anything they can be put back into like another batch is like confetti or I haven't done it in a while but there's there was that company called clean the world where you can send their scraps your scraps to them and they basically rebatch. All right, so now we are going to uh, bevel them. So this is my favorite tool for that. It is a Y veggie peeler and it's by OXO. It's the same one I've been using for all these years. And so we'll just kind of just smooth all these edges. I am a little particular about when you start a soap bar, I want it to, that first impression to be really smooth. I want you to be able to move it in your hands and these edges, they're actually they're not sharp, but they're very very precise, I guess. I don't know what word I'm trying to say. Um, I like them beveled. So it's really just what I prefer is why we do what we do. And we do give them a little um, wipe down just to make sure all their little bits are like all these little pieces say make sure they're all brushed away I just want a really nice presentation for you and it's my preference for how I like to use things as well so it just it's just how I am Boop. and this actually goes pretty quickly as well I tend to like this part better than the planing. So I will probably try to do a lather test on this one um, since it is pretty much cured. I usually like them to go six weeks so we're not quite there yet but we'll have a pretty good pretty good uh, lather and usage on them as is. 
Oh, it smells so good. It's just, it really does smell like coffee. The coffee oil and the using of the coffee. It just really brings the coffee through and the vanilla just brings a really nice sweetness. So, isn't that nice? It just looks so good. I'm very pleased with this batch. See, these are the little, you know, bits in. Sometimes they like to get stuck. We'll let them sit and dry for a little bit and then they usually buff off a lot nicer. But it's just a really sweet coffee. It's a just way beautiful. Sometimes coffee fragrances can be a little bit too sharp, a little too uh, chocolatey, a little too buttery. I don't know. This to me is a more authentic coffee and I really love it. Okay, so let's do a lather demo. I've already, whew, a little slick, I've already been using this one and so I can confirm that it is amazing. Cold processed soap retains the natural glycerin. It's not processed out like some commercial bars. So it is naturally going to draw moisture to it. It's important that you use a draining soap dish. So this is like a snowberry. Anyway, this dish does not drain on its own. So I do have this little insert. You just need to allow soap to dry just as much as possible between uses. You don't want it to sit in water. There are some things that are going to affect the lather with cold processed soap. Your water type, whether it's hard or soft or if it has any chemicals like chlorine in it. Um, my water is well water, but it, it leans towards the hard side of things, but it's not bad. I don't have a lot of minerals in my well water. Your skin type and what's on your hands when you go to clean is gonna affect the lather as well with cold processed soap. And because it's not surfactant, or detergent based, you may have to put a little bit more effort when your hands are extra greasy, what have you. So my bars are formulated to be a little bit more balanced. I have lower coconut oil, so that means that the, the lather is not just going to be wild and huge bubbles and explosive. That's because the coconut is a cleansing oil and I work to create bars that are little lower on the cleansing. Some people call soap bars moisturizing. I don't buy into that. They're either cleansing, more cleansing, or less cleansing. I work to create a little bit less cleansing bar, but it's still soap. Its job is to cleanse your skin. You're just want, looking for something that's not gonna overstrip your skin, but the amount of time you spend washing is all gonna affect that. So my question is for those bars that are higher in coconut and they have this amazing lather and you're wowed and everything, how does your skin feel after, you know, five to 10 uses? Is it something that feels good? Great, continue. If it's not, then you may wanna look for a soap bar that has a lower cleansing number like mine. So let's give this a go. Now I'm a germaphobe, so that means once I turn this on, I'm not touching it again until my hand is clean on this side. So that's just the way I am. I'll try not to turn it on very much. So these smaller bars, take a little bit more friction to get some lather going. I probably should be going this way, but I'm right-handed. A bigger bar would get more friction right away. And you definitely need water to create good lather. So right off the bat, we already have some really beautiful lather. And it's generally recommended that you wash for 30 seconds. So, you know, that is a, a fair amount of time to get going here. I love this foamy lather. Since I tend to wash for longer periods of time when I do have oils and such on my skin, I like a lather that once it starts to deflate a little bit, I can add a little bit of water and just get right back to it. So as you can see, this is more than enough lather. And it feels so good, I just love it. And so with cold processed soap and that natural glycerin, some people may need to use some friction, depending on your water as well. A little bit of friction to get that um, any excess residue off. Some people just don't put any effort into the actual rinsing process and they'll just like and be done. 
Well, sometimes that'll leave a little bit of residue with cold processed soap and that may actually dry your skin out further. So I always recommend that you really, oh, it's getting very hot. I really recommend that you add that friction in as you're rinsing off as well. All right, so now to do some labeling. I have the end pieces and sample pieces cut here. And I just use these glassine bags. Super simple to do. And we get a decent amount of samples with each batch. So I feel like I have plenty to send out. Some of my really big batches, um, the way we cut them, we get a lot of samples. So that's always fun. I like to, I just love samples. I love being able to send them out. Be sure to check out the video description because I have a lot of information there, like, you know, where I get things, etc. So, I have my cute little labels here, and I've already done some. And we just fold them over. I go this way, just I feel like it gives a, a better backside, but it does kind of show that edge there just a little bit. It's not a big deal. And that's about it for the samples. It's nothing too difficult. I get all of my label sheets from, oh, I did that really quick. I get all of my label sheets from online labels. And I try to get the shaped ones so I don't have to do any cutting. It doesn't always work because my printer is very stubborn. Today it doesn't even want to print. But I managed to get these pushed out. Okay, so here we have the samples. Those are ready to go. So here we have the boxes for the soaps and I just use these um, boxes from Wholesale Supplies Plus. I think I already mentioned a little bit about the soap boxes and price increases, etc. And so we just take the bar Look it over, make sure it it's looking nice. So there's still gonna be a little bit of you know soap crumbles and such. That's just that's just how it goes. Just how it goes. Oh, it smells so good. I just can't get over how good this batch smells. I love that vanilla fragrance. Just light vanilla coffee fragrance. And these bars, I just weighed one, and it was 5.3 ounces. I mark my labels at five ounces because handcrafted soap, it's always going to continue to evaporate just a little bit. All right, so here we have all the soaps. And let's see, so here's my labels. And I just love how they turned out. I do not have a label video. I get asked it a lot. It's not something I think I will ever do because that would just require me to film at my computer. Like, I don't know, that just doesn't feel like me. And I do struggle with labels. They aren't the easiest thing for me. So, there we go. We have one done. Now, um, what was I gonna say about that? I do design in Adobe Photoshop. I know there's Lightroom, but I haven't really See, I want to work clear back here. This is where it's easiest on me, but I don't need to be up here for the camera view. And with a lot of these labels like this, it's just something I've had for years and years, and I just add and tweak to it. This one came about fairly simply today, and so I was able to get it done in about an hour or so. Sometimes these designs take me a little bit longer to do, but that's the story on all of that. I use Adobe. I have a, a membership to like Adobe Cloud or something like that. I'm not quite sure what it's called, um, but I have access. I pay like $53 a month and I have access to 
um, pretty much all of their programs. I gotta go closer, Jimmy. I just can't see it clear over there. So there we have the honey vanilla latte soap, all packaged up, ready to go. This is actually gonna continue to cure for a little bit longer, but it can cure in the box. So the next um, project for me to do is actually to go take pictures. So that is definitely going to be the next process because I'm gonna wanna get out a, a little container of honey. I'm gonna want a little container of cream and I'm gonna be brewing some coffee, etc. So I hope you have enjoyed this considerably more in-depth version of my soap making process. Thank you for watching and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.